Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, uh, welcome back uh, to the class. So, in the last classes, uh, you see we have discussed uh, uh, quite a lot about uh, laminar premix flames. Of course, in an engine, you encounter uh, turbulent flames and it can be turbulent premixed, uh, non premixed, or partially premixed flames, but still, you understand that the understanding of the laminar structure is very important because we can consider the unit a unit uh, flamelet to be essentially building up uh, that we can consider a turbulent flame to be essentially an ensemble of these kinds of unit laminar flamelets where the inside structure may or may not be disturbed depending on the situation. So, uh, to even understand the turbulent flame it is very important to understand uh, how a laminar flame works. Uh, how the different physical chemical processes, how convection, diffusion and reaction are uh, balance each other inside the inside a laminar flame, inside a laminar premix flames. And in that regard, we have found out, uh, we have done uh, analysis to essentially found, uh, find out the, the laminar uh, flame speed whereas, uh, or the laminar burning flux. Uh, laminar burning flux is essentially the density unburned density times the uh, laminar flame speed. So, uh, we have found out the planar laminar flame speed using uh, both um, a simple uh, scaling analysis as well as by using a more detailed mathematical analysis called the seldovich frank kamenetsky analysis. So, using that we have found out the, uh, the analytical expression for laminar flame speed. Okay. But of course, you have to recognize that even though it is the laminar flame speed that we have found out, this is very important to even describe the global behavior of turbulent flames because of the same reason I just discussed that is we can consider the full complete turbulent flame to be an ensemble of different laminar flamelets. So, essentially the laminar flame speed equation that we derived that provides a lot of analysis on what needs to be done to even stabilize turbulent flames because if the locally the flame behaves like a laminar flamelet uh, that the local velocities have to be of the order of the uh, the laminar flame speed to make it stabilized. But of course, if there is something more in involved concepts involving like you know, turbulent flame speed which we will show in due time that the turbulent flame speed is much bigger than the laminar flame speed and as a result you can stabilize the turbulent flame uh, statistically uh, even though you cannot stabilize even though the flow velocities can be much larger than the uh, laminar flame speed. Okay. So, those things uh, we will discuss later, but now uh, I just want to impress upon you that uh, for a laminar for a premix flame laminar or turbulent the laminar flame speed is the most important quantity. Okay. Even in the expression of turbulent flame speed you will see that uh, that which is the global uh, propagation rate of the flame whereas, laminar flame speed is the essentially the local propagation rate of the flame and what we have dealt with is essentially the just a planar laminar flame speed that is even an idealized uh, laminar flame. So, uh, these things we can connect into different levels with different order increasing orders of complexity. Uh, so, I just want to impress upon you that the laminar flame speed is a very important uh, quantity and uh, for um, is a very important quantity in combustion and especially in premix combustion it is the most important quantity. So, we need to develop tools uh, to understand uh, we have developed this mathematical tools to describe laminar flame speed and now we will discuss how this laminar flame speed which is such an important quantity can be essentially derived experimentally. Okay. So, uh, here we uh, talk uh, about uh, the different uh, methods. So, we will see here that um, uh, we will uh, talk about the determination of laminar flame speeds. One can essentially determine the laminar flame speed using this Bunsen flame method where you have this is your Bunsen flame this is the wall and you have this uh, uh, fuel air mixture coming out through this tube and this is the flame. Okay. It is uh, essentially a conical uh, flame which is stabilized here. It can be either planar or it can be cylindrical depending on the situation. It you can uh, do it both ways actually and let us consider this is like a planar slot uh, jet 
which is uh, in two dimension that is it is uh, infinite uh, uh, thick uh, on the play uh, in into the board and out of the board. So, there is a two dimensional problem. So, we can estimate the global uh, response or the global flame speed by using this thing that is if we measure the total mass flow rate coming through this uh, through this tube uh, through this um, uh, through this tube if you know that from say your mass flow controller readings or something like that and you know this density of down bond mixture because you know the temperature of that and the pressure of that and you know the cross section area okay uh, if it is a cylindrical tube you can find out the, the cross section area is just pi or square if it is a slot jet then you find out part per unit uh, uh, thing actually or we, of course it cannot we cannot estimate m if it is a fully two dimensional uh, uh, fully infinitely thick uh, tube. So, anyways, it's like uh, suppose if it is a j, if, if it has a thickness like this, if it is a thickness like this, you can find out m, you can find out af, which is the total area like this. Okay, and uh, uh, so uh, you can find out the area given uh, depending on the situation, or uh, if it is just a cylindrical, you find out the area by pi r square. Mm, and then uh, using this thing m by rho u af, you can find out that uh, average uh, flame speed. But of course, you see this average flame speed uh, there are the flames shape is not uh, same everywhere. For example, here it is more or less like a planar, uh, it is not planar, it is actually cylindrical if you are considering a cylindrical jet mm -hmm. uh, and here it is cylindrical whereas here there is a concave shape. So, then this may not give you correct results. So, more refinement would be that uh, and that is shown here that uh, if you plot the flames, if you obtain the flame speed versus radial distance, I will show how to do that. It is not same everywhere because the flame structure is different in uh, different places. So, um, on the other hand you can find out uh, this thing by the following. Uh, that if you if you have a, a flame like this and this is the approach velocity okay and say the flame is at an angle alpha give it to the approach velocity then uh, uh, then of course uh, uh, we can resolve this uh, approach velocity uh, which is vertical into two components uh, tangential component to the uh, uh, component which is tangential to the flame and a component which is normal to the flame and then we if this is say u0 then of course this one is u0 sin alpha uh, okay sin alpha u so this is alpha u and this one is u0 cos alpha u and uh, this tangential component actually if you uh, if you just uh, translate it to here this vector if you uh, mm, you will see that uh, across the flame the tangential component does not change so that there is pure continuity of tangential component across the flame whereas the normal component changes because of heat release okay so, the normal component will change like this and the tangential component does not change. So, the flame the actual flow velocity will be deflected like this. Okay. So, this will not change and this will be your uh, your basically um, uh, uh, this, 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 this normal component will be essentially your u0 sin alpha u times rho u by rho b that is it is uh, because this is rho zero, u 0 sin alpha u. So, this will be u 0 sin alpha u times rho u by rho b because of the fact that your mass has to be conserved okay because across the flame the mass has to be uh, has to be conserved. So, uh, and the mass conservation is given by the normal uh, velocity across the surface area. So, that is why you get this relationship whereas this does not change. So, you, z you get still u 0 sin uh, alpha u and so that is what causes the deflection of this velocity as you see here. But the most importantly the fact is that if this flame is stabilized like this. So, then it means if you are an observer sitting on the reference frame sitting on the flame itself then it means that uh, uh, then it is uh, the flow is approaching uh, to u at a velocity of u 0 sin alpha u or because the flame is in a stationary state we can consider then the, the then it is essentially the the flame speed uh, because uh, if this velocity would have been zero then the flame would have propagated into this unburnt mixture with the same velocity u0 sin alpha u okay so then uh, basically the flame speed we can find out su is equal to u0 sin alpha u so this is what you get here that is a local flame speed is given by u0 sin alpha u okay so this is how we can locally you can cal cal calculate the the local flame speed of a of a bunsen uh, of a bunsen flame and uh, if you uh, plot this uh, uh, as a radial distance versus uh, flame speed you will see that this is definitely not uh, here you see that this this is definitely not constant whereas it remains constant for a certain radial distance that is up to this region up to this region whereas uh, very near uh, the rim uh, at 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 uh, very near the very near the rim which is at large radial distance you have heat loss into the walls so that's what the flame speed reduces whereas uh, here 
the flame suit can change because of the additional curvature effects which we will later call as stretch effects ok. So, because of this the flame suit changes, but uh, this at the if you if you estimate this from a photograph um, uh, of the Bunsen flame uh, you can if, uh, if you just by estimating the flame angle and uh, uh, by knowing the mean flow velocity u 0 which of course, has to be uniform at this state uh, otherwise this flame will not be like this it will be a different kind of shape that is if you see that this uh, flow velocity is uh, uh, is uh, uniformly going into this then it means that uh, um, the, uh, the which is given by u0. So, then it uh, means that the flame speed is given by u0 sin alpha u. You should do this on your own to convince this why it is so. Uh, so, flame speed is the definition of uh, flame speed is the is the speed at which the uh, uh, speed of the flame relative to the local fluid velocity. So, if the fluid velocity is, uh, is, a, is, a, flame, is a speed uh, or, or the definition of the local flame speed is the, is the propagation rate of the flame with respect to the local fluid velocity. So, uh, if, the, if the local fluid velocity is at rest of course, the flame uh, propagates into the unburned fuel air mixture at a velocity which is equal to the flame speed. On the other hand if the, flight, if the, if the fluid velocity is on the other hand of the fluid if the flame is at rest it means that the fluid velocity must be fed at the flame fed to the flame at a speed equal to the flame speed uh, so that to ensure that the flame is stationary ok. So, this is how you estimate the flame speed and of course, you can there are other methods there is this porous plug burner method. So, uh, we can have a porous plug to uh, just stabilize the flame little bit upstream and then of course, it has some heat loss. So, you can um, you can do many things just to minimize the heat loss and I will not talk in this details, but this is just another method by which you can estimate the flame speed. Uh, but the, this is uh, interesting this uh, x 1 d spherical and cylindrical flame. So, basically you fill up a uh, fill up a fill up a spherical vessel with with the fuel air mixture and uh, fuel plus air mixture and you insert and you ignite at the center um, with a pair of uh, electrodes ok and uh, this uh, flame essentially grows like this ok. So, uh, with time it grows like this and uh, of course, by estimating the radius one can uh, find out the radius versus time and then differentiating with respect to time uh, finding drf dt one can find out the, the local uh, uh, codilet the, the local flame speed. Of course, uh, the indirect way is that one can estimate the pressure rise in the chamber and relate it to the propagation which generates the hot product causing the pressure rise. Uh, but um, better is you directly image the flame front with a high speed camera and then you measure the quantity in the downstream value and then convert ok. So, SU 0 is basically uh, is uh, rho B 0 times rho B 0 is essentially the adiabatic uh, burn gas density uh, divided by rho U 0 times SB 0 and uh, then you write that you can show that is this SB 0 is essentially we will be equal to uh, is equal to DRF DT and but of course, there is a flame stretch which we will discuss later that is uh, that is the surface of the flame is um, not planar it is stretched uh, because of the curvature effects and uh, using that uh, we need to essentially subtract the flame speed uh, the, uh, the, uh, the flame stretch to arrive at the at the planar laminar flame speed which is the basically the, 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 the signature value for the given fuel air mixture at a given temperature and pressure upstream temperature and pressure. So, here also the other methods is that you find out uh, one can do a, a stagnation flame method of course, the flame is stretched here as well. So, in the stagnant in the stagnation flame method what we have is that you have two uh, jets like this uh, both are like fuel air mixture. which are like uh, impinging on each other this jet comes like this and this jet comes like this and they impinge on a stagnation plane and uh, the flame is uh, formed in this uh, in the little upstream and downstream ahead of the, of the stagnation flame uh, respectively as you see here. Uh, so, here is this uh, jet uh, diverging jet and of course, you see that because of the divergence there is a stretch uh, the flame is stretched and uh, we have to essentially subtract the flame uh, stretch out uh, to get the planar laminar flame speed which is the um, uh, parameter of choice. Actually the planar laminar flame speed because it as you see it has involves both transport as well as reactions is a very good choice for validating detailed reaction mechanisms. So, that is also one of the reasons why the people have uh, spent a lot of effort in estimating the flame speed or the planar laminar flame speed at very by different kind of methods with uh, different orders of with, with different um, uh, 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 and try to improve the accuracy of these different um, methods by which flame speed could be estimated uh, over, over time. And uh, nowadays, uh, people either use this uh, spherical uh, uh, flame uh, 
uh, method or this uh, stretch flame method, the stretch flame or this uh, counter flow flames to estimate the planar laminar flame speed. So, as I was saying that yes, the results can be uh, for it is used for validating the reaction mechanisms and for transport properties especially the radicals. So, uh, now next question is that uh, so, if flame speed is such an important quantity which um, uh, if flame speed is really such an important quantity um, which uh, which characterizes uh, the flame both the, the propagation behavior of the flame and also uh, and that uh, comes out because of certain unique structure of the flame uh, unique structure of the, of the diffusion region of the reaction region then uh, what does this really depend on and of course it is a practical interest because you have a you fill up a tube with a um, with a premixed uh, fuel air mixture and you ignite at the end ok. And of course the speed the, the flame will propagate from one end to another end and it is a practical interest to know what would that speed be because of course as we discussed later previously that in a premixed uh, gas turbine combustor locally the flame will be stabilized only at that point where the local flame speed is equal to the local uh, normal flow velocity. So, it is in, a, in designing combustors also if you are designing a nearly premixed combustor one must have a very clear knowledge about what the flame speed of the mixture you are working with otherwise you cannot stabilize the flame ok. So, uh, flame speed is really important in that respect and uh, so uh, we need to really understand what does the flame speed depend on. So, if you remember the flame speed we discussed um, was uh, uh, was uh, uh, was obtained like this that is the Zelda which Frank Kaminsky analysis gave me um, the flame speed to be like F 0 square uh, is equal to uh, um, lambda by C p times B c times Lewis number times e to the power of minus T a tilde by T b tilde uh, this was your e uh, minus activation energy at it uh, activation temperature by uh, by the burn gas temperature and this was equal to the minus of R n s number and followed by this zelda which number squared ok. So, um, now zelda which number if you remember zelda which number involves um, zelda which number involves this thing that is T a tilde if you write in tilde terms that is uh, T b 0 uh, square tilde and this was T b tilde minus T a tilde um, which is equal to 1 ok. So, if you remember that um, ok. Now, T a tilde if we consider it as constant you say zelda which number is essentially proportional to T b 0 square. So, if you see that you can write this as uh, this F 0 square um, is essentially F 0 square is essentially uh, your T b 0 tilde to the power of 4 because of this zelda which number square keeping the T activation energy constant times T a tilde by T b 0 tilde ok. So, you see that the to the leading order and of course, we can write this for any mixture actually F 0 square F square later that is uh, any burn gas uh, uh, burnt uh, uh, laminar um, uh, burning flux is essentially is equal to T b uh, tilde which is can be any burn gas temperature need not be adiabatic also uh, minus T a tilde by uh, T b tilde ok. So, uh, you see the fact of the matter is that the F 0 that is a burning flux has a very strong dependence on temperature ok. So, uh, so um, this thing that is uh, the burning flux having a very strong dependence on temperature uh, says uh, is actually shows up in the experiments or in the simulations also which uh, tells that uh, and we expect that the burning flux will have a very strong temperature or the uh, or the adiabatic flame temperature or the or the burn gas flame temperature dependence. And uh, yes we, we find that in experiments that is uh, if you see that we see that the burning flux uh, to the leading order or the laminar flame speed to the leading order is actually governed most most strongly by the adiabatic flame temperature. Okay, and uh, this this is a testimony to that fact that if we plot laminar if we plot laminar flame speed on the y axis and the uh, and the uh, uh, equivalence ratio on the x axis for a methane air mixture uh, and uh, this adiabatic flame temperature on the on the other uh, y axis uh, if this is your adiabatic flame temperature okay you see that this is your uh, essentially the your uh, your flame speed plot. So, the flame speed uh, mimics almost the adiabatic flame temperature of course, it can shift slightly on the right hand side and left hand side because it has got the other air dependence through Lewis number etcetera ok. 
Now that is also uh, has a very important effect in this thing. So, you see that if you consider this all this uh, alkanes like all the way from methane, propane, uh, methane, ethane, propane to butane, pentane, hexane and heptane. Okay, you see that the, at a, the flame speed, the laminar flame speed of uh, methane is smallest at a given equivalence ratio then it uh, increases uh, to some extent for ethane and then it increases slightly for propane. And then when we go here you see that all this um, laminar flame speeds of uh, butane, pentane, hexane and heptane are all same. Why is the reason? The reason is actually the adiabatic flame temperature you see you go to the go to this plot and you plot adiabatic flame temperature you see that yes the methane has the lowest adiabatic flame temperature which is correct and but then ethane increases slightly and then this adiabatic flame temperature does not increase at all from propane, butane, pentane, hexane and heptane. Okay, at a given equivalence ratio, very very small it changes. So, that is why this flame speed also because the flame speed to the leading order depends on adiabatic flame temperature, it does not change at all uh, for the um, it does not change at all um, between uh, butane to heptane and this is called the fuel similarity. So, butane to N butane to N heptane the flame speed does not change and the reason is purely the fact that your adiabatic flame temperature also does not change. Okay. And uh, now what happens with hydrogen? With hydrogen it is a little bit uh, little tricky but th though the behavior holds more or less you see that here if you plot an laminar flame speed on this axis y1 axis and the adiabatic flame temperature on the y2 axis as a function of equivalence ratio this is your adiabatic flame temperature okay but this is your uh, for laminar flame speed. So, yes it changes it uh, has a bearing to that. But you see here the um, this Frank Kaminatsky analysis also says that the F0 square will be proportional to Lewis number okay. And uh, this effect is really exaggerated for hydrogen because hydrogen is a very small molecule. So, its diffusivity is very large okay. So, um, uh, which is why in the lean side uh, the, this Lewis number is very small uh, its molecular diffusivity is large uh, and uh, on the richer side uh, that is where the effective Lewis number is obtained by that of uh, hydro oxygen. So, um, this uh, Lewis number is 2.3. So, because of this strong change in Lewis number this F0 square shows uh, little bit uh, deviated behavior from, um, from this uh, adiabatic flame temperature okay. And uh, this you will see that later these effects are most uh, significant for essentially the stretch flames. So, this shifting of, uh, of, the, of the flame speed in the flame speed is will actually have a strong um, impact on the on the stretch rates uh, and that will be controlled by this Lewis number that we will see later ok. For now we will just focus on the planar laminar flame speed because then that is why this we have this F0 ok. So, uh, uh, the planar laminar flame speed uh, once again I uh, will see that the dependence on the molecular structure how does it depend on the molecules. So, we see that um, if you plot with like uh, um, from C to H6 that is ethane to uh, uh, ethylene to acetylene uh, okay. So, you see it uh, increases at one atmosphere, but is it increasing due to the adiabatic flame temperature because your acetylene adiabatic flame temperature is large. So, what we can do is that we can we can choose the oxidizers in such a way or we can dilute the oxygen with such an uh, inert in such a way. So, that the adiabatic flame temperature is constant at uh, different cases and then also we see that the acetylene wins um, uh, over, over, over uh, ethylene and uh, uh, and um, ethane ok. So, um, uh, so it uh, is acidity uh, despite. So, here the fuel structure also has some effect uh, through um, uh, with, uh, uh, on, on the flame speed and that cannot be solely captured by adiabatic flame temperature. So, yes indeed adiabatic flame temperature is very very important, but it is not the only factor that uh, controls the, um, the flame speed behavior. So, that is uh, what is the lesson of this, uh, this thing ok. So, one very important thing is the dependence on pressure. Why? Because you see engines operate at a high pressure both the uh, car engines as well as the gas turbine engines. You say gas turbine engines operate at a pressure of 30 atmosphere, 30 or 40 atmosphere right. So, we need to know uh, only knowing how the flame behaves in one atmosphere is not good enough. So, we need to know how the flame behaves at uh, 30 or 40 atmosphere or 50 atmosphere. So, what we see is that that um, if you remember that we obtained this uh, uh, in previous classes we obtained this relationship that. Uh, how much does F0 uh, on what should F0 depend on? Uh, yeah, this this is the thing. So, it was uh, shown that uh, 
that uh, that F0 is going to depend going to increase with pressure P to the word of n by 2 when n is the order of the reaction whereas S which is F0 that is a burning flux normalized by density mm, uh, that should behave in a manner P to the word n by 2 minus 1. So, depending on the order of reaction of course, F0 must always increase with pressure the with the irrespective of the order of uh, the reaction uh, because the burning flux must increase with pressure and that comes from the fact that the, the whole reaction rate is increasing at, at, at high pressure because collision is higher. But uh, as uh, with as, as because the density also decreases this is not uh, guaranteed. Uh, so, depending on the order the pressure can actually the S, S actually can increase or decrease with pressure ok. So, here we will see what is happening uh, for actual uh, fuels. Uh, so, uh, you see that uh, with uh, pressure uh, uh, as we have seen that the pre dependence on uh, pressure uh, comes on the flame speed through two things that is it comes to chemistry it comes to density ok. The chemistry part is in the when you say F0 is essentially this burning flux uh, is proportional to W reaction rate to the power of half ok and then the reaction rate uh, we can correlate with pressure ok. So, uh, but then as uh, as you there is a flame speed that also contains um, uh, that also contains your uh, density. So, uh, the density uh, is uh, uh, the density effect is essentially uh, 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 comes uh, uh, the density effect is uh, uh, is also can take away some of the chemistry effects uh, on the dip when it comes to dependence on pressure. So, uh, you see that uh, that S here if you consider hydrogen and flames uh, at a different equivalence ratios we and uh, at different pressure we see that this highest is for one atmosphere and then it reduces with the increasing pressure. So, the flame speed essentially reduces with pressure and the reason is because the density is actually reducing ok. So, um, uh, the density is actually increasing with pressure. So, as the density increases you have more gas to heat up ok. So, and that is why the flame speed is uh, retarded at high pressure. Uh, so, it is an uh, it is an effect of density it is not a chemistry whereas, uh, if we really under want to understand how the flame speed depends on pressure the better quantity to look at is this burning flux which is F0 is equal to rho u times S u uh, 0 ok. So, this quantity because it uh, accounts for the density weighted uh, flame speed essentially density weighted flame speed. So, F0 is a proper parameter because it is only affected by chemistry and not affected by density. Okay. So, we find that uh, this uh, if we consider the same thing and if we plot the laminar burning flux with equivalence ratio we see that uh, with the increasing pressure the laminar burning flux at a given equivalence ratio monotonically increases and that is the pure effect of chemistry which we have just discussed. So, as we said that F0 usually increases with increasing pressure and flame speed actually decreases with increasing pressure. So, that is one important thing we have to keep in mind. Okay, so now using that, we can uh, using just the relationship that we wrote, we can find out the global order of the reaction, and we see that the global order of the hydrogen air reaction. Of course, as you have seen, that hydrogen air combustion involves at least nine species and nineteen uh, or twenty uh, or nineteen reactions, and uh, those whole thing can be just uh, simplified into one reaction order uh, using this uh, burning flux and the pressure dependence. So, if we plot that, we see that the um, that the uh, this is how for different equivalence ratios the global order depend on it starts from somewhere near uh, 2 for uh, larger equivalence ratio cases and then it uh, drops and then it can again increase. So, that is why because it is less than 2 it is actually uh, mostly it is less than 2 we have uh, basically uh, uh, the, the flame speed decreasing with pressure. Now, we can find out the overall activation energy also the global activation energy for the whole uh, hydrogen reaction using this uh, formula as well ok. So, uh, this results uh, this results demonstrate that the role of the pressure on the two body reaction and the three body reaction um, and it is not possible with n less than 0 also ok. So, uh, we see because the role of uh, two body branching reaction is uh, um, uh, is is uh, the role of pressure of the we see that uh, the, the two body branching reactions are promoted with pressure and the three body branching reactions at terminations uh, 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 the, the reactions are not promoted as such the flames behavior is promoted or retarded with pressure and this is um, not possible with N0. But of course, this is a fact on the burning flux whereas um, um, uh, the actual behavior comes from the fact that of course, uh, reaction uh, rate increases with pressure which causes the increase in the burning flux whereas, the flame speed um, reduces with pressure and that is a purely an effect of density and is not an effect of reactions. So, uh, the fact that uh, 
the f uh, now uh, uh, another parameter that has left been left is essentially this uh, mm, uh, is this uh, uh, this uh, transfer properties. Okay, we have talked about atomic flame temperature. We have talked about molecular structure. We have talked about pressure. Uh, we have not talked about transfer properties. So, but as you see that your F zero square has proportional to lambda by CP when all of the proper uh, parameters are constant. So, the how the transfer property affects um, the flame speed can be easily found out by experiments where the nitrogen uh, can be replaced with argon and because they have similar molecular weights and diffusivities um, um, but different CP the, the flame temperature the adiabatic flame temperature is actually changed. And, um, Okay. So, uh, flame speed uh, we just manipulate flame speed using this property we can manipulate flame speed with different inert substitution. As you see that uh, because the CPs are changing uh, with the different inerts uh, though the though their diffusivities are, are similar at least for nitrogen and argon um, uh, the, the with the nitrogen and argon as the CP is uh, changing it uh, your flame speed is actually increasing with argon air and it increases further with helium air because you have a less uh, your if the CP is less you have less. Uh, mm, uh, energy to be spent to heat that gas up, right? So the flame speed essentially is higher to uh, in these cases. Okay, so um, uh, this is CH4 in very smart. Uh, this is of course considers uh, uh, to be the equivalence ratio, but uh, will uh, to be equal to one uh, behavior. Here we get. So, similarly with uh, CH4 in uh, different uh, uh, CH4 percentage in different years we see that uh, uh, this is the this is the laminar flame speed and this is the bar, bar, this is the um, burning flux and of course, the density also plays a role. So, uh, but still the nitrogen air has the least burning flux followed by helium air because helium is very light and uh, your uh, uh, then it goes up increases up to argon air. So, this is what we get.